In this lesson, we are going to discuss function operations. Just like real numbers, we can perform operations on functions such that given two or more functions, we can combine them, we can perform operations on them so that we can create a new function. For instance, f and g are functions. The sum f plus g is defined by this. The image of x under the new function f plus g is just the image of x under f plus the image of x under g, wherein x should be in the domain of both f and g. We can view this as follows. Suppose these are my functions f and g. If you put x as an input, the output of x under the machine f is f of x. For g, if you put x as an input, the output is going to be g of x. Now for this machine, f plus g, if the input is x, what this machine does is to get these outputs from the two machines f and g and take their sum. Hence, for an input x to have an output under the machine f plus g, f of x must be a real number and g of x must be a real number. So that f of x plus g of x is a real number. What does it mean for f of x is a real number? That means that x is in the domain of f and for g of x, to be a real number, that means that x has to belong to the domain of g. So therefore, its domain is just the intersection of domain f and domain of g. So similarly, we can define the difference of the functions. In this case, we're just going to get the difference of the images under f and g. And the domain is also the intersection of the two domains because f of x has to be a real number and g of x has to be a real number. The product f times g of x is defined as the product of the images under f and g. Again, the domain of the product f g is just the intersection of the two domains. For the quotient, f over g of x is defined to be the quotient of the images of x under f and x under g. What would be the domain of f over g? Again, take note that f of x has to be a real number, which means again that x is in the domain of f. g of x has to be a real number, which means that x has to be inside the domain of g. But lastly, g of x should not be equal to 0 because g of x appears in your denominator. Hence, the domain of f over g is the intersection of the domains of f and g, but you have to take away the values of x which will make your denominator equal to 0. The domain of g over f. What would it be? It's still equal to the intersection of the two domains. But this time around, since f is the one in the denominator, we are going to take away the values of x, which would make the denominator f of x to be equal to 0. Let us consider this example. We want f plus g of 2. By definition, f plus g of 2 is f of 2 plus g of 2. Let me first compute f of 2. f of 2 is 2 plus 2 over 2 minus 1. That's equal to 4. And g of 2 is equal to 2 times 2 plus 3. So that's equal to 7. Therefore, f of 2 plus g of 2 is equal to 4 plus 7. This is equal to 11. Next g minus f of 0 is g of 0 minus f of 0. Let's compute g of 0 first. Substitute 0 for x here. So that's 2 times 0 plus 3. That's equal to 3. And f of 0 is equal to 2 over negative 1 is negative 2. 
Hence, g of 0 minus f of 0 is 3 minus 2. That's equal to 1. For our next example, we want f times g of negative 1. This is f of negative 1 times g of negative 1. Let us compute f of negative 1 first. f of negative 1, substitute negative 1 here. That's negative 1 plus 2, so this is equal to 1. And g of negative 1 is equal to absolute value of 3 times negative 1 minus 1. This is negative 3 minus 1. Absolute value of negative 4 is 4. Therefore, this product is 1 times 4, which is equal to 4. And lastly, f over g of 2 is f of 2 over g of 2. f of 2 is equal to square root of 2 plus 2, which is equal to 2, while g of 2 is equal to absolute value of 3 times 2 minus 1, which is equal to 5. Hence, this quotient is 2 over 5. Let's look at this example. We're given these two functions, f and g. We want to find these four functions. Let's start with f plus g. f plus g of x is equal to the sum of f of x and g of x. So it's just 1 over x plus 2 plus x over x minus 1. This is equal to, you have an LCD of x plus 2, x minus 1. The numerator here is x minus 1 plus x times x plus 2. Simplifying the numerator, we get x squared plus 3x minus 1 all over x plus 2, x minus 1. For f minus g, f minus g of x is equal to the difference of 1 over x plus 2 minus x over x minus 1. The numerator is x minus 1 minus x times x plus 2, which is equal to negative x squared minus x minus 1, all over x plus 2 times x minus 1. For the product f times g, f times g of x is the product of f of x and g of x. 1 over x plus 2 times x over x minus 1. So that's x all over x plus 2 times x minus 1. Lastly, for the quotient f over g, f over g of x is defined to be f of x over g of x. So that's 1 over x plus 2 all over x all over x minus 1. How do you divide complex fractions? You copy the numerator. You change division to multiplication and you get the reciprocal of the denominator. That's x minus 1 all over x. So this is x minus 1 all over x times x plus 2. Let us now find the domain of these four functions. Recall that for these three, for the sum, difference, and product, the domain is just equal to the domain of F intersection domain of G. What is the domain of F? F contains a denominator, x plus 2, so that means you just have to take away the value which will make the denominator equal to 0. In that case, it's negative 2. What about the domain of G? You take away the value which will make the denominator 0. In this case, when X is equal to 1, the denominator is 0. So it's all reals take away 1. Therefore, 
What is the intersection of the two domains? It's the set of all real numbers. Take away negative 2 and 1. For the domain of f over g, recall that it's equal to, again, the intersection of the two domains. But this time around, you take away the values of x, which would make your denominator equal to 0. When would g of x be equal to 0? g of x is equal to 0 when x over x minus 1 is equal to 0 or x is equal to 0. When you cross multiply this, you get x is equal to 0. So therefore, this set here, you take away 0. Domain of f, intersection, domain of g. From our computation here, it's r, take away negative to 1. But then you take away 0 as well. That's the answer. Another example, we have f of x equals square root of x and g of x is equal to x minus 6. f plus g of x is the sum of f of x and g of x. So that is just square root of x plus x minus 6. The difference f minus g is defined to be f of x minus g of x. So that's square root of x minus the entire, don't forget the parenthesis here, x minus 6. So therefore, it's square root of x minus x plus 6. f times g of x is the product f of x times g of x. f of x is square root of x times g of x, which is x minus 6. You can leave your answer like that. And lastly, f over g of x is the quotient of f of x over g of x. f of x is square root of x all over g of x is x minus 6. Let us now compute the domains of these four functions again. For these three functions, the domain is equal to the intersection of the two domains. What is the domain of f? f is a function which involves a radical with even index. How do we get the domain of that? You just set the radicand to be greater than or equal to 0. Whereas for g, you have no restrictions. So the domain of g is the set of all real numbers. So therefore, this is 0 infinity, intersection, the set of all real numbers, or that is just the set 0 up to infinity. For f over g, its domain is equal to the intersection of the two domains, but we have to take away the values of x, which would make your denominator equal to 0. The domain of f, intersection domain of g, is already 0 to infinity. We have to take away the value which would make g of x equal to 0, x such that x minus 6 is equal to 0. And this value is just equal to 6. Hence, we have 0 to infinity. Take away the set containing 6. What is that? So if you look at this, you have 0 up to infinity. However, you're going to take away 6. So you will have a hole there. How do we write this in interval notation? You start from 0 to 6, but you avoid 6, so you have open. And then combine it, union, 6 up to infinity. For our last example, f of x is equal to x squared minus 1 and g of x is equal to x squared minus 4. Again, f plus g of x is the sum of f of x and g of x. So that's x squared minus 1 plus square root of x squared minus 4. 
for f minus g of x, you just get the difference of f and g. So that's x squared minus 1 minus square root of x squared minus 4. For the product, f times g of x is f of x times g of x. That's x squared minus 1 times the entire x squared minus 4. Lastly, the quotient is f of x over g of x. So we get x squared minus 1 all over square root of x squared minus 4. You can leave an answer like that. Or if you want, you can also rationalize it, but I will leave it like that. Let us get the domains of these functions. Before we can do that, let us first compute for the domains of f and g. What is the domain of f? You have no restrictions for f. You do not have any denominator or radical sign, so it's just the set of real numbers. What about the domain of g? You have a square root sign, so therefore what do you do? You set the radicand to be greater than or equal to 0. Have x squared minus 4 greater than or equal to 0. How do we solve this inequality? This is already a quadratic inequality. So we factor it as x minus 2, x plus 2. And then you create your table. X minus 2 is going to be 0 at 2. X plus 2 is going to be 0 at negative 2. We divide the number 9 at these points. Everything to the right is positive. Everything to the left is negative. In this interval, negative times negative, we have positive, negative, and positive. But what do we want? We want it to be greater than or equal to 0. Greater than 0 means that we are going to take positive. What is this as an interval? This is the set of real numbers less than negative 2. So that's negative infinity up to negative 2. Can we include negative 2? Yes, because we're allowed to have 0 as a product. Union, this interval is 2 up to infinity. So therefore, what is now the domain of F intersection G? This set, intersection with this set, is just this set. This is the domain of these three functions. Lastly, for the domain of f over g, it's equal to the intersection. Take away the values which would make your denominator equal to 0. So it's negative infinity to negative 2 union to infinity. When is g of x equal to 0? When square root of x squared minus 4 is equal to 0, when you get the square root of both sides, you get x squared is equal to 4. So therefore, x is equal to plus or minus 2. So you take away 2 and negative 2. And therefore, what is this set? Since you are going to take away 2 and negative 2, this one will now be open. Negative infinity to negative 2 open, union open to infinity.